Welcome home to Unity San Diego. We are so glad to share today with you this journey of today as we learn about coming of age spiritually. So come along with us now. within my heart and I will wait upon the Lord wait upon the Lord so come with me I will make a quiet place a quiet place within my I will wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Be still. Be still. and breathe with you now and open my mind and my heart to hear anew, to see anew, and to consider anew all that will help me in my spiritual development and understanding and relationship with you. I will make a quiet place. I will make a quiet place. within my heart and I will wait upon the Lord wait upon the Lord I will make a quiet place a quiet place within my healing, revealing who we are. We come 
together for healing, revealing who we are. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one, eternal, infinite being. We sing in the name of the one. Eternal infinite being. We are brothers, we are sisters, joint together. Our sisters join together in love. We are brothers, we are sisters join together in love. Love, 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 love together in love. together in love. Isn't that right? That's what we're here for, to join together in love. Thank you so much for our gathering music. Good morning, Unity San Diego. Good morning. Okay, I'm kind of wondering, are people still sleeping? Do you think it's fall back and not roll forward or something like that? I don't know. So I'll say it again. Good morning, Unity San Diego. Good morning. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. That just warms my heart. And people out there in love streaming land get to hear you. And good morning or whatever time it is out there in love streaming land. Hello, how you doing? We're so grateful you're here today to join with us. We're so grateful that spirit gets to show up in some wonderful, wonderful way. So if you could back that slide up. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Well, no, I mean back. No, not up, back. Yeah, way back. <laughs> it's so funny. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to roll with it. But I just want to welcome you all who are here. I'm Reverend Edith Washington Woods. I'm the senior minister here at Unity San Diego. And who I'm talking to is our asso uh, senior associate minister, Reverend Carla Leitner. And we have with us today Reverend Gretchen Pena. She'll be giving our service. Yay. She hasn't spoken since before COVID. So that's been about at least... Well, 21 months ago, I think in February of 2020. It's, it doesn't seem that long, does it? But it is. And so we want to welcome you here to this service. And, and let us open with prayer. <laughs> Spirit, loving presence. We're so grateful for this opportunity for us to, to gather together. To gather together as we open our hearts to receive our good. We're grateful that each of us are showing up knowing there's an indwelling presence within us. And so we take a moment to acknowledge that presence as we ground ourselves in this now moment. Let's take a moment to give thanks for the indwelling presence within us. Hmm. We're so grateful. We're so grateful to know that this presence is flowing through each and every one of us, that this presence is flowing in this whole entire planet. Whether people are aware of it or not, we give great thanks for this awareness. In this moment, we pray, and so it is. Amen. And now we have our affirmation <laughs> that we'll say together. Let's say it together. Guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love, we move forward in unity to realize our spiritual potential. Yes, we do. And then we have um, our vision statement. Now, in unity, when we're developing vision and mission and core values, we know that the vision statement is really a, it, it's a bold stance on something we like to see happen in the world. And we also know that we can't do it by ourselves, that it takes not just Unity San Diego, but it takes the world. It takes us seeing the world show up like that. So let's say our vision statement together, will you? A world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Can you catch hold of that? Can you see that possible for the world? For we are declaring it right now. And then we have our mission statement. Now, our mission statement is who we know, and many of you know us to be here at Unity San Diego. So I'd like us to affirm it as well. Let's affirm it together, please. Empowering personal growth through positive spiritual principles, inspirational music, and community service. Yes. And now we have our opening song. It is Wherever I Walk by Aaron McGowan. So this has got a funky little beat. It's brand new to us. So if you feel like you want to get up and groove with us, but definitely sing along with us. Here we go. Wherever I walk, let me bring love. Let me bring love. Let me bring love. Let me bring 
truth. Let me bring truth. Let me bring truth. Let me bring truth. Wherever I walk, light. Let me bring light. Let me bring light. Let me bring light. Wherever I walk, light. Let me bring light. I was ready to dance some more. <laughs> well, we had to end it sometime. Yeah, I know, but it was getting funner and funner. So this is the time we greet each other. And what we'll do here in the sanctuary is we'll turn around and greet whoever you look at, just whoever you uh, focus your eyes on. And for those out there in love streaming land, we're going to put the greeting in the chat box. That way we're still greeting each other. Now here is what our greeting is today. When I walk or talk with you, I bring love and peace. I'll say it again. When I walk or talk with you, I bring love and peace. Let's say that together. When I walk or talk with you, I bring love and peace. Okay. When I walk or talk with you, I bring, I bring love, love and, peace. and peace. Again, walk when I walk or talk, or talk with, with you, I bring love and peace. Okay, I think we got it. That was nice, short, and sweet, wasn't it? Yes, 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 yes. So, we have a, a few announcements today. But the first thing I want to do is I want to acknowledge any birthdays or anniversaries that happened this month of November. So if you have a birthday or an anniversary, I see Melva back there waving her hand <laughs> and Donna. And so, yeah, so if you want to raise your hand or stand, that'd be great. Anniversaries, yes, yes. Reverend Carla's got an anniversary this month. We just really want to acknowledge you. Yeah, so do we want to sing, say, what? happy birthday to you? What if it's their anniversary? And the anniversary. We love you, we bless you. Yes, so we're going to do, we love you, we bless you. We behold the Christ in you. Let's say it again. We love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ in you. And if somebody could put that in the chat box, that would be super awesome because I'm not over there at my phone to do it. I also want to give great thanks for our circulation day. It was the first time we've had something like this going on since the, the you know, 20 months ago. And I want to thank all of those who brought things to give away. I want to especially thank everyone who came, who showed up on Saturday to give service, whether it was before, during, or after. Thank you so much. And there are several people who came and, and got things and took bags of stuff off, including food. And so we're just really appreciating you today. Thank you so much. Today, um, we have the celebration of life for Al Palladino. It is happening here at the sanctuary at 2 p.m., and it is followed by a, a, a food and reception and, and memories. So anyone who would like to come and just really celebrate who Al was for us, please join us here back at 2 p.m. The next announcement we have is uh, the celebration of life for Pat Basco. It's going to be next Saturday on November 20th at 1 p.m. here again in the sanctuary, followed by fellowship, uh, memories, and food. So anyone who wants to come to that, please come and join us so we can celebrate her life. Next we have the celebration of life for Flor Sanchez, our beloved Flor Sanchez and it's going to be an informal celebration the family is having. 
It's going to be on Saturday, November 27th, so that's the Saturday after Thanksgiving from 11 to 1, and the address is on the screen, 999 Bayside Parkway in Chula Vista. It is uh, uh, by the bay, and they're asking if you want to bring, like, a, a flower uh, to to throw in the bay on remembrance to her. They're also asking if people will come and, and share some of their memories. It'll be a videographer there. If you're not able to make it, you can certainly make a, a video of your own and um, send it to us here at Unity San Diego and we'll make sure the family gets it. In preparation for 2022, I know you don't wanna hear it. It's, it's about seven weeks away now. I'm going to do what I did last year and have a grounding meditation series. And it's simply most of the 30 minutes we're doing is going to be in the silence. And so if anyone is interested in, guess, just moving through, completing 2021 and moving into 2022, you are welcome to come to these meditations that start this Wednesday from 6 to 6.30. If you'd like the link please email me, revedith at unitysandiego.org, and I will send you the link. YFM, our Youth and Family Ministry, is seeking volunteers and also hiring two child care workers. Uh, we'll continue to run this announcement until those positions are filled. And lastly, and I forgot to uh, say this to the, the, the ushers, we have index cards. Those of you who got them last week and you filled them out, there's no need for you to fill it out again. But anyone who didn't have an index card, please grab one when you're walking out and fill it out and put it in the basket. For those of you who are online, you can um, put something it, about being thankful or grateful. So one thing that you're grateful or thankful for during this month, and you can put it on our Facebook page, email it, to me at revedith at unitysandiego.org, or now that needs to be done by Thursday of, of this week, or if you want to put it in the mail, like what we call snail mail, we would like you to put it in the mail by Tuesday so that we receive it in time. Uh, again, Gratitude Basket is all about next Sunday, where I'll be sharing some of your gratitudes and things you're thankful for. And now I'd like you to sit back to relax and listen to our meditation song, When I Pray, by Daniel Neymar.
This is our time of meditation, so I invite you to settle yourself comfortably in your seat and take a few deep conscious breaths, because we know in many languages the word for spirit and breath are the same. So when we breathe consciously, We are breathing in spirit. So I invite you to do that right now. Breathe in spirit. And allow yourself to settle. Because this is a safe place. This is a sacred place. Made so by our intention. And now as we join together in prayer... Silently allow the words that you hear me speak to become the words of your heart. Precious Spirit, I realize that my prayer life is not all that it could be. I don't pray as often as I should. I don't pray as authentically as I should. And perhaps it's because I don't feel I have the right words. I don't have the the spiritual language to address you. Maybe I feel unworthy. But then I realize I cannot be unworthy because I'm created out of your very spiritual DNA. I am a child of God. I am your child. And you love me infinitely, absolutely. And I don't need flowery words. I need only to speak to you as if I'm speaking to my very dearest friend, which of course you are, because your will for me is absolute good. So I take a moment now to reset my prayer mode as I turn to you right now in the silence.
and precious spirit, I thank you for these holy moments enveloped in your love. And I thank you for the opportunity to pray whenever, wherever, however I feel the need. And my prayer is that I may feel the need more and more frequently. I am humble. I am grateful. I say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. And now please join us in speaking the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. We'll try this again. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Welcome. The song that we're doing next is one again by one of our favorite yeah, singer-songwriters, Faith Rivera. And it is a song that we, this morning we were looking at each other going, why haven't we done this more? Because it's just such a wonderful song. It talks about how we are all children of this universe. And I think that says it all. I'm one with five. 
Ron is very good at reading my mind, at least, when it comes to music. So. Well, we had a long conversation. Yeah, well, <laughs> still, you read between the lines. Well, I'm honored to be here this morning. Um, no, 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 no. I have been a member of this church for around 45 years, and when I first came here, Reverend Stevens was a minister, and we, it was a very thriving church. We had a lot of guest speakers, like famous Amos is the one I remember, and Unity luminaries, and I was very new to Unity um, coming to church. I was exposed to it all my life through the uh, literature, but this was the first time I'd been to a church. And I was broken, I thought. And um, I was looking for um, healing. And I listened to all these speakers, and what I heard them say, I don't know if they actually said this, but what I heard was, if you follow the unity principles, if you pray, if you affirm and deny, if you tithe, if you forgive, if you read the books and go to the classes, you will never have another challenge. <laughs> Honest to God, that's what I heard. And, and imagine my surprise <laughs> when the challenges kept coming and um, I realized I needed to do things differently. So what I have learned that when you're spiritually mature or when you're working on spiritual maturity, because I don't claim to be there by any means, but when you're working on spiritual maturity, we, we always have challenges because we're in schoolhouse earth. That's what we're here for. Just like a weightlifter mo grows their muscles through resistance of the weights, we grow spiritually through our challenges. Or we can if we choose to. We can just curl into a fetal position and whine. But um, that doesn't really get us anywhere. But what I've discovered is as you begin to mature spiritually, you still have challenges, but the nature of the challenges changes and the intensity changes. Um, I, I remember reading long ago about a priest who heard the confession of nuns, and he said it was like being stoned to death with popcorn. <laughs> Because their sins were so teeny, you know. Anyway, right now, in the world today, in our lives, everything is a hot mess. Politically, socially, culturally, racially, economically, uh, pandemically, um, environmentally, all these adjectives. It's a hot mess. And the question is, how are you dealing with it? How are you dealing with it? And I want to correct a misconception because I know that some people in unity believe that positive thinking means I will never look at anything that isn't positive. I will look only at positive things. I will put on my blinders. And this really doesn't work, because the analogy I like to use, if you are going online to make an airline reservation, and you type in where your destination, you want to go to Boston, and you put that in, and you put your credit card information in, and absolutely nothing happens, because you have not told the computer where you're starting from. We have to acknowledge where we are. And if where we are is a hot mess, we have to acknowledge that. Listen to this carefully. You cannot cure what you fail to acknowledge. It cannot be done. We have to start where we are. And the unity universal denial 
is nothing can take or keep my good from me. It's not that I am affirming that I like being in a hot mess, but I recognize that I am. And having recognized that, I can start doing whatever is necessary to move out of it. Remember the comedian Flip Wilson? Some of you do. He had a character named Geraldine. Geraldine was a preacher's wife, and she was really too sparkly and sassy to be a preacher's wife. But, um, and she had an attitude. And someone was interviewing Geraldine, and they asked her if she was a Jehovah's Witness. And she said, no, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm a Jehovah's bystander. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> and the thing is, if we want to grow spiritually, we have to get involved. We have to be engaged. And the way we do that is through prayer. Prayer is the answer. Someone has said, and I, I wish I knew who it was so I could credit them with this wonderful statement, but I, I don't remember. I never noted who it was. He said, we talk in unity a great deal about being children of God. When are we going to be adults of God? And this is what being spiritually mature is about. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to just hold the thought for a while. When and how do you pray? Just think about that. In our culture now, at this time, so much is predicated on instant gratification. We have all this information at our fingertips. Um, we don't have to get out the dictionary or anything. You know, we can, we can get any information we want with a click or with a phone call. Um, and we're, we're accustomed to that. And we're not accustomed to things that take a lot of time. But if we go back in history to the Fillmores, the co-founders of Unity, Myrtle Fillmore started it when she healed herself of tuberculosis. And she sat in a chair and she put a chair opposite her and she visioned Jesus sitting in that other chair. And she conversed with Jesus. And she also went through her body and blessed it and asked its forgiveness for everything she had thought was not working. And that took her over two years. It didn't happen in an instant. It didn't happen with the click of a button. Charles Fillmore, uh, I didn't get the facts on this, but he had a withered leg from a horrible childhood accident. His, um, one of his legs was probably five or six inches shorter than the other. And for most of his adult life, he wore a big lift in his shoe he prayed himself down to almost no lift at all. He grew his leg through prayer, and it didn't happen overnight. It was said that he would sit making affirmations for, he would repeat an affirmation thousands of times. Um, so we need to get out of this instant gratification mode when it comes to prayer, because prayer takes time. A minister was announcing the hymn in his service. He said, please open your hymnals to page 88, and we're going to sing, Take Time to Be Holy. And in the, because of time constraints, we will sing only the first and last verses. <laughs> prayer takes time. There are many different kinds of prayer. There's prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of asking, prayers of praise, prayers of contemplation, and others. Um, Reverend Edith talked about thanksgiving last week. And this is a wonderful place to start if you don't have a really good prayer discipline. I'm going to use that word, discipline. Thanksgiving is like the training wheels in our prayer process. 
and it's simple because often we are thankful, we are grateful for something in our lives. And instead of just thinking, oh, that's nice, give thanks to God. Thank God for opposable thumbs. Thank God for hands. Thank God for everything about your body. Um, there are, you know, the list is infinite of things we have for which to be grateful. And when, some, when you, the car doesn't hit you that seems like it's going to on the freeway, you say, thank you, God. When you find that lost item, you say, thank you, God. Just make that a part of your daily spiritual discipline, and you will grow from there. That's a good grounding. The most frequent kind of prayer is a prayer of asking, please, God, or please, God. But it's okay. Jesus did it um, quite a bit. But if it's the only kind of prayer you use, I will say if it's the only kind of prayer we use, we are using God. Imagine if you had a friend slash acquaintance that only called you when she needed something. She needed to borrow something. She needed you to babysit. She needed you to watch her house or water her plants while she was on vacation. She needed a ride to the doctor. And other than that, she never connected with you. Would you think that was a good friend? But this is our relationship with God for many of us. This is the extent of it. And God doesn't mind. God has infinite patience. God will wait however many lifetimes it takes us to get it right. But if that's the only way we pray, we're not getting the benefits of prayer. We're using God either as a spiritual vending machine or as a spiritual fire extinguisher. And sometimes we need to, but don't make that your only prayer mode. We stunt our spiritual growth if that's the only time we connect with God. Because if we're only asking, we're not communing with God. We need to take time to be holy. We need to take time to develop that relationship. You know that any relationship on the human level doesn't just happen in a heartbeat. It takes time. It takes getting to know one another. And we need that relationship with God because we are so much greater than we know that we are. God has put us here for a purpose, and we can't even know what that purpose is because we haven't plumbed the depths of our relationship with God. We want God to be our best friend. There's a couple of scriptures that speak to this. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I could do without masculine pronouns, but you get the drift. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't trust your own thoughts. Trust God. And then Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. Seek first the kingdom of God. Go to God first. Our general pattern is if something is wrong and we don't just curl up into a fetal position, we do everything in our power that we know how to do to fix it. And then finally, we go to God. Go to God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. It's so much easier. And what we don't even know and I can't even tell you about is how profound the blessings will be when we make that determination to seek God first, to make God our highest priority. 
So invite God into all your activities. You may think, well, I'm so busy. I've got all my work. I, or I have all these commitments, and I have a family, and I have things to do. Remember Brother Lawrence, the monk, who was also quite busy. So he talked to God while he was scrubbing pots. We can talk to God at any time, in any circumstance. It doesn't have to be a special, dedicated place with angel statues and stuff. Just talk to God when you're changing the oil in the car. Talk to God when you're scrubbing the toilet. You know, God wants the connection, and we need it. We just don't realize it. So spiritual maturity. Do I claim to be spiritually mature? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I'm working on it. Um, so whether we're children of God or adults of God, we are of God. We are from God. Like I said, this very spiritual DNA is who we are. And this is important to remember. And the results of this deeper connection with God, like I said, I can't tell you they're unimaginable, but they have to be beyond anything. And if we were to reach critical mass of everybody praying and everybody communing with God, I think it would have, I know it would have, a positive impact on this hot mess that our world is in right now. I want to read you from um, Eric Butterworth's Discover the Power Within You. He said, I'll, I'll be talking to someone and they'll say, well, I haven't prayed much lately because um, I don't have anything to, to worry about right now. Everything's fine. And he said, they're missing the whole idea of prayer. Most certainly problems may be solved through prayer, but that is only a secondary value. The most important purpose of prayer is lifting ourselves to a higher level of consciousness where we can be conditioned in mind and body with the all-sufficient life, substance, and intelligence of God. This is the highest purpose of prayer. And I want to close with a story from Robert Fulgham. Remember Robert Fulgham? Everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten. He was a real Renaissance man. He, um, I think at one point was a cowboy, at another point was a sailor. He was an art teacher. He was, of course, a writer. And he was a Unitarian minister. And when this takes place, he had been at a conference, a two-week-long conference on the island of Crete. And the conference was about Greek culture, and there were all kinds of, of important people speaking about this. So, um, but the man who had arranged the conference and who had created the institute where it took place was a Greek man named Alexander Papaderos who had felt that because of World War II and the horrible animosity between the Cretans and the Germans, the Germans had absolutely massacred the Cretes, he felt if there could be forgiveness there, there could be forgiveness anywhere. And he pulled it off. He created this Institute for Peace and Humanity. So it was in this place that this conference had taken place. This was the last minutes of a two-week conference. And Papaderos said, are there any questions? And everybody knows this is code for, we're done. Um, and, and people started packing up their stuff. And Robert Fulgham, among all his other um, attributes, is a class clown. And he has a wicked sense of humor. And he couldn't resist. He raises his hand and he's recognized, and he says, Dr. Papaderos, what is the meaning of life? And everybody groans and rolls their eyes and starts packing their stuff up again. And Papaderos says, no, sit down, I'm going to answer his question. And he said, when I was a child, he lived in Crete during the war, he found 
a broken mirror that was from a wrecked German motorcycle. And he tried to put it back together, and he couldn't do it. So he took the biggest piece, and using rocks, he scraped all the rough edges off until he had a little round piece about the size of a quarter. And he was a little boy. And he would use this little mirror to shine light into crevices, into dark closets, into any place he could find where light would not normally uh, shine. And this became a, a challenge to him to find, try to find the darkest places he could get shine a light into. And as he grew older, he, he, he kept this little mirror and he would pull it out and fiddle with it every once in a while. And he finally came to realize, um, he said, and I'm going to read you his words, um, I grew to understand this was not just a child's game, but a metaphor for what I might do with my life. I came to understand that I am not the light nor the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, and knowledge is there. And it will only shine in many dark places if I reflect it. I am a fragment of a mirror whose whole shape and design I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, I can reflect light into many dark places, into the dark, dark hearts of people, and change some things in some people. And perhaps others will see and do the same. This is what I am about. This is the meaning of my life. Any questions? Let us pray. Precious Spirit, give us the grace and the courage to commit to a closer, more intimate relationship with you for no other reason than it's possible and then we want it. We're not doing it for any reward. We are doing it simply because we are your children on the way to becoming your adults. And we crave this deepening relation with, relationship with you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. And now the music team is going to do, sing, perform The Greatest Thing by Mark Pendergrass. So please rise and sing with them. Thank you, Reverend Gretchen. It's a delight to have you back with us. So this song we normally do very slow and meditative, but we're going to give it a positive forward energy to this and give it a, a little bit more energy. Here we go. Two, three. Here we go. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing
I can't hear. Oh, there we go. It takes a few seconds. Thank you. I remember singing that slower before. I know. We, yeah, really we, slow and gliding, but this is like, yeah. We've done it during, during Fort like Washington. The... Yeah. About that tempo, yeah. Yep. It's, it's really fun to do it that tempo. It's, it gives is. a strong uh, message to it. That I like that. Yeah. Thank you. So now is our, our next week. We have the gratitude basket. So that gives you a little hint to put those thankfulness, those things you're grateful for, in that gratitude basket right back there. Reverend Edith is going to be reading some of your gratitudes in, the, in her sermon entitled The Gratitude Basket next Sunday at 10 a.m., so please join us. Now's our time of giving and receiving, and if you're going to, e to mail an offering in, our address is on the screen. We also have a beautiful offering box in the back there. If you'd like to put a check or offering in, uh, you can hit our donate button if you're online um, or go online and make a payment. And we are so grateful, so grateful because weren't you really spiritually fed? I was, and I feel good where I'm spiritually fed. And so for me, I liked, I love, this is one of my favorite parts of the entire Sunday because I get to show some of that gratitude. So we have an offering blessing that we say twice out loud and once in the silence. Now, if you have an offering, you can take it in your hand and hold it or just some love from your heart. So let's say that together twice, please. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And again, please. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And then once into the, in the silence of our hearts. And Mother, Father, God, sweet spirit, we are so grateful for these ties, these loves, these offerings. We are so grateful to be able to help spread unity where we are spiritually fed. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. All right. Um, I do not have a lot to say about this one, which is very unlike me. <laughs> Normally I'll go on and on and somebody has to cut me off. But um, really, I, I just this is just a really beautiful song, and I think it fits Reverend Gretchen's message uh, so well today. So we're going to give it a shot. It's called Closer. <clears throat> like the rushing wind Would you breathe within my heart Heart. And through the raging storm, would you hold me in your arms? Arms. Cause I need you. Take me over 
Spirit, draw me closer to your heart. Through the wind and rain, I can hear you call my name, name. When the nights get rough, I will still sing out your praise. Cause I need you. That so was beautiful. Much. Wasn't it? It made me so cry moving. here, cry tears. <laughs> mm. That was beautiful. So beautiful. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> so as our hearts are open by drawing spirit closer to us, let us pray over these tithes and love offerings. Spirit, we know who you are, that you are as close to us as our heartbeat. 
and we draw you even closer as we give thanks for these tithes, love offerings, and gifts. To know that we're giving from that space that spirit resides, from that space of heart, love, compassion, and empathy. We give thanks to the giver, for each of us have given in some way on this particular day. We're so grateful to have these heart connections. As we give, as we give, we also receive. And what blessings we have received here today. What knowledge and what remembrance of the God of our understanding that we can speak to at any time. What a wonderful circle of love this is. The giving, the receiving, the blessing. And we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Well, Unity's foundation is prayer. And here at Unity San Diego, we are always, always praying. We have our prayer ministry where they will actually, you can call in Monday through Friday from noon to 5. You can call in from noon. To <laughs> I think your battery's dying. Uh, Monday through Friday from dying. noon to 5 p.m. And the phone number is on the screen. And then we have our prayer chaplains. Our prayer chaplains are holding sacred space right now, and they're continuously doing that every moment of every day. We have prayer chaplains here in the sanctuary, and we also have prayer chaplains who are online just holding that sacred space, holding the high watch for everyone's greatest good. And we have silent unity that's available for us to call from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m., every single day of the year. You also speak to someone who holds your prayer in confidence and prays over that for 30 days. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to actually have that human connection. So let's take a moment and just pray over our prayer box that we have in the back here. And we are so blessed. God of our understanding. God of love. When we each and every one of us pray in our unique ways, whether it's an asking, an intention, a gratitude, or a comment, those thoughts that we've held in our hearts, we know that everything that we say, every thought we speak is a prayer. And so we strive to speak to you as a best friend, to share our love, to throw our our life on into your arms, God, knowing that the highest good is always, always what is available to each and every one of us as, we, as our prayers are answered in divine order and love. And we say thank you. Thank you, thank God. Thank you, God. And so it and is. So it is. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us, friends, as we sing More Than Enough by Daniel Namod. There is more than enough in the universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. 
fills us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Have a wonderful week, my friends. Namaste. Thank blessings. you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.